uh, as a team, they are developing a new kind of uh, organization, a new kind of way to, to take decisions of, and planning and so on. Allow for confidence. Uh, it, it, uh, allow the, uh, to, uh, to motivate that resource uh, uh, become a, a collective uh, power and uh, to create a space, a space and time for others. These are our characteristics. I don't know if you want to add something. You? It's there. There, there was just um, I don't know if that was clear. It's allow, allowing conflict. Conflict. Allowing conflict. And um, I think the is no, I think it's collective responsibility mm -hmm. and uh, developing and reinforcing collective responsibility. And then the, this creating space and time for others to express expertise, ideas, competency, and leadership. So that's it. Well, and I think one other small thing is that in terms of resources, it's uh, that's part of the collective responsibility, collective agency, that it's not just up to a leader. Or if a leader needs to have a public face, quote unquote, why is it just that one person is senior leadership usually? So it's like, what, who else from the staff can be in that public, public leader? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that your guess? Mm -hmm. Okay, give me a moment to switch this over to you guys. Oh, are we? Uh, we're four. Are we four? Mm. There was no three. Oh, there was no three. Okay, so um, we take over as the three. Um, our um, question was about the uh, looking into traditional or forgotten practices that um, are helpful in developing relational leadership and um, Annette and I worked together and her uh, initial inspiration was from the use of the talking stick which is um, a very um, uh, widely practiced um, ind indigenous um, tradition. Um, Jacob added to that that sometimes a leader is used to pass the stick and for anybody who is sitting there saying oh that sounds a little hokey you should try it. It's a very, very effective way of, of um, diminishing conflict among strong-willed, smart people. <laughs> because it basically means that one person talks at a time and that other people listen respectfully. So, um, we talked to 12 people, in, including three people online, and um, our suggestions were many and varied, and none were duplicative, interestingly. Um, the first, Chris suggested um, that we look back at the old de Tocqueville um, uh, experience where um, de Tocqueville came to the United States and looked at the community meeting process um, and that the uh, replication of town hall meetings today really doesn't quite do it because the community meeting process involved everyone, not just the leaders of the communities. So what would it look like to actually go back and include all of the voices of people in a given community. Secondly, um, from this group, we um, uh, mentioned the Maori practice of touching no noses to breathe each other's mutual spirits in, and that's known as Hongi, H-O-N-G-I. Another idea came um, from Marianne, who um, was getting quite excited about the idea of, of the Greek process, uh, the Greek Greek practice of mentors and mentees 
coming together and not only learn in a learning process, but also in an enjoyable process of sitting under trees and having discussions and drinking wine and <laughs> enjoying the process with each other. <laughs> yes. And, and Ken suggested it might have gone farther than that. We all know that's true. Yes. And I suggested that the women were doing something similar but in a different place. So, um, uh, and then uh, came the suggestion from the same group that Michelangelo and his um, um, his compatriots did similar type of mentoring with young, uh, younger artists and, and uh, really spending time and, and nurturing that process. Then Ken suggested also the, the format of the guilds, which were much more like family structures, where there was a serious taking in of a young person and nurturing that young person in the process of learning the trade and like raising a flower in the sense that you really have that vested interest not only with the uh, the guild master but also with um, his um, his apprentice um, I, I'm suggesting also the thinking of the old healing circles which are now having a, a resurgent today it's a very ancient practice and it's something that many people are doing around not only um, criminal acts and, and finding reconciliation, but in the schools uh, to reconcile differences among young people. Um, also, the use of, quote, victim-offender dialogues, where there is one person who gently leads the facilitated process between two people who are in, are in dialogue with each other over a conflict. Uh, Janine from West Africa suggested the practice um, online of being in time um, community leaders um, in some West African communities um, would actually make an effort to spend time with those people in their communities, they actually walk to the various um, residences and, and um, have conversations with people. Ron from Israel online um, brought, brought the idea forward of the Jewish tradition of the teachers who don't actually have the answers, they have the questions. And the process of teacher and student is one of asking the questions. Um, Annette then said yes, and that brings up Aristotle and um, the whole Aristotelian method of teachers asking questions. Although I've been to law school and that can get a little bit hairy. So. <laughs> Janine came back with another suggestion from uh, Burkini Faso, um, where um, leaders would sit in silence in nature to hear the wisdom of the ancestors before making an important decision. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, Brian talked about Saging International. And do we have Brian online? He's on Skype. He's on Skype, and so I. Here, let me put him on speaker. Yes, thank you. And Brian. Brian's from upstate New York. Are you still there, Brian? Great, I'll turn you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. here. Go ahead, Brian. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, hey. Good to see you all. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to share, Brian, what you've I, written? Yeah, I, I was going to say there's, a, there's an organization called Saging International that uh, came out of Rabbi Zalman Shachter Shalomi. There's, a, there's an organization or a movement of conscious aging. And uh, they are reintroducing the wisdom circle where they're trying to explore just how to bring um, their process of, of the idea of the conversation uh, that promotes, uh, promotes, promotes the reflection which leads to wisdom. So that's, that's one thing. I also said as a church person, I'm very uh, aware of trying to bring about uh, mentoring and uh, conscious intentional intergenerational groups mm -hmm. with the idea that um, I believe that it takes the, the purpose and the meaning 
of being part of the community to help our elderly to become wise, to become the sages. They, they, they need to know that the, what they have is needed and, and important. And Carl Jung basically said that you wouldn't have this many elderly if it wasn't important to the species. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Brian. Thanks, Brian. We'll see you back on live stream. That's in case. So that it concludes us. So, thanks. Okay, good. All right, that was fun. Thank you. Um, and so the this group was on question number five. five. Mm -hmm. That goes beyond words. Yeah. Well, after months of uh, careful research and data collection, <laughs> uh, we came up with one central metaphor, which was uh, a metaphor of that of dance. So to honor the way we started, we were going to actually um, interact with you uh, in the way. So um, the first dance was, um, was with our words, blah, 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 blah. blah, 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 blah. A second level, we have three levels. First was a word. Second was with our expression. <laughs> and our third level was in our stillness. space that has been discussed already or written about? Relational space? I mean, probably it would be interior architecture or whatnot, yeah. feng shui or and all of that. Mm -hmm. but, um, like physical space. I want to just do a quick process yeah. check-in. Just well, as you put out that beautiful question. Somebody used the phrase collective responsibility. It is our collective responsibility to have something to share back mm -hmm. to the rest of the conference. And we have about 15 minutes left together. Ken and Yucko and, and Ginny and I are here as creators of our dialogue space. Um, and we want to make sure we honor our collective responsibility to you and also to the bigger group. So I'm just checking in because at this point we were going to give Ken. Jacob, I feel like I've said quite enough, and Jenny, a chance to respond to, play yes and with what came up here, and to perhaps talk a bit about relational space, or whatever your ideas are, to take a few minutes each, and then we need to decide what to share. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just, well, yes, and build building on the metaphor of dancing, I think it, it is very illuminating metaphor because it offers that if you want to dance with another person, 
you have to both of you recognize that you're in the process of moving together. Mm -hmm. and, and the moving together produces something which is different from the individual movement of, of the person. Um, and, and to start thinking of leadership as dancing start, it helps mm -hmm. you recognize that you're in a continuous, non-stop, seamless flow of, of, of engagement with other person, people. And, and the leadership of dancing, I think those of you who have been going to dance school, you know that the first lesson you learn if you want to be a lead dancer is to be a lead follower. Yes. You need to learn to follow the other person because uh, that brings out the aesthetics of the other person. And that's the essence of a good, of a good dancer, a good lead man, in this case, a man dancer, is to bring out the poetry of the woman as, as a joint expression. And you need to be able to follow the movement and, and the engagement of the woman in order to bring that out. And, and so that you produce a collective experience of appearance and, and aesthetic beauty. And I think starting to explore yourself as a leader is that you're continually both following but also offering suggestions and having that flow back and forth. And it is always seamless in the sense that it's never I do, you respond. That, that the silence of you right now offers me an opportunity to continue talking. And if I offered silence, that would be an invitation for other people to respond. So we're, we're joined in the activity. Um, and that, that brings me to something else that I find enormously important when we talk about relation, relational leadership or a constructionist approach to, to, to leadership is to, to start thinking, how do we, how do we build stories or ways of bringing to language uh, the real lived experiences of people in organizations. Uh, I think um, if we are to struggle by having a different paradigm we want to impose on people's lives, it's a hard job. And people are not always asking to be revolutionized uh, by our ideologies and our planning vocabularies. They, they need to find ways of working that out themselves in ways that are fitting to the purposes and activities of the organization, but, but to help people start exploring that relational engagement, and, and how can we bring that into language in ways that helps them bring forth an experience of the power of relational togetherness in organizations, and then how do we start noticing that, and, and that would easily produce curiosity and need for further elaboration of their vocabularies, and sometimes they will be brought to the point where they're actually ready to change their final stories about leadership or leadership organization and, and actually revise it quite dramatically. And, and a lot of us have had such experiences as meeting these ideas and starting to explore the potential of it. And, and how do we invite people into to doing that? And, and one thing I, from being an organizational very cautious about is, is to be appreciative of the purposes of an organization. That, that, that all the, the, the current stories people have in organizational life very often reflect their ideas about the purposes that, are, that they're serving as an organization. And they try to, to make their stories of leadership fit the purposes. And, and if we are to offer them ways of retelling and perhaps re question themselves, we need to pay honor to the purposes that they're currently able to articulate. And, and from that point, point of view, explore ways in which they can evaluate their stories and perhaps enrich them by offering new, new words and new attentions. And, and sometimes they might even revise their purposes as an organization as a result of discovering that there's so much more to be said. And I think that's another task of relational leading is never to get stuck in, in, in conclusive ideas or remarks or words um, in the organizational life. That actually the purpose is actually keeping the flow going. So start thinking about leadership as, as keep opening conversations and mm -hmm. keeping uh, conversations on an edge. That's, that they're keep, keeping that feeling there's still more to be said. And, and I see all too often that once we have kind of defined these are our values and these, 
this is our strategy, people lose interest in talking about it. Because well, then if that is said, I mean, well, what's the meaning of it? It has no meaning for us anymore because there's no need to keep talking about it. I think I start thinking that the task of leadership, not necessarily the leader, the leadership organizations, to keep conversations alive and fruitful and that feeling that yes, there's yet something to be said. A good strategy is what lives on in people's conversations. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's on the paper. Yes. So I'm, I'm aware that we're running out of time. And um, I, I would like to say about 30 seconds of something, which is a quick reflection on what we did here today and why we did it. And, the, and um, because for me, uh, relational leading is a, the, the, the phrase that's capturing my imagination these days is creating the conditions in which leadership can emerge. And we could have come in and done something more along the rituals and patterns of how these circles have been meeting, but Karen and I um, annoyed <laughs> to say, could we interrupt that and create something that was a little bit different? Um, mm -hmm. And to experiment with creating some conditions, which may have made been comfortable, uncomfortable, um, that, that required us to take some risk and for you to take some risk. And, and I think that that's, um, that's a piece of it for me, is how do we shift, not, not just conversations, I think they're important, and, but also how do we shift conditions, how do we shift systems, and how do we shift the space? How do we create, mm -hmm. how do we do things that are holistically different than the way we've been doing them? And that in that process, something new can emerge that we didn't, that, that isn't part of the way we normally design and structure uh, organizational life. So that, that's all I wanted to say. Um, Ken, and I'm also aware that we have this brilliant leader of this thinking in our midst who has said, has been part of the group. And I so value that you joined in this. And I'll just take maybe a one minute because we're all running out of time. And um, and some of this will reflect things that have already been said. But I don't see leadership as, a, as, as inherent in any person and in particular mm -hmm. characteristic that comes out of some kind of emergence or a set of coordination. Mm -hmm. Now, in that sense, leadership, you, could, you could look at top-down leadership as a form of coordination. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. this is going to happen. I mean, we did it. We gave it to you. We followed your orders and so on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it happened. And, and we went somewhere. Now, the question is whether, and here's the, to me the criteria, does the process of, of, of leadership value the vitality of relatedness itself? That is, the vitality of the very process out of which leadership emerges. That process, not only within the organization, but within the relationship that organization to its, to its exterior. So it would be the value, the promotion, the enrichment, the invigoration, and so on, the prosperity of the set of relationships out of which something happens. A top-down will get you someplace, but relations will suffer. Nobody's really very much involved. Everybody's up for themselves, and so on. But we've got inherent in a lot of these practices that have been mentioned today, already, the whole, it's like a vocabulary that we've developed, a whole vocabulary of possibilities, um, all the way from the, the micro-process of a turn in a conversation, mm -hmm. just the way you turn the conversation so there's a value to the person, to the relationship, all the way to um, the way in which you might bring in large numbers of people in decision-making processes and distribute those decision-making processes within an organization. Now, there's a question of how to do all that forces up in the air, but I don't think we're so far away from the possibility because it seems to me there are people in leadership positions. They've been granted that, and there's going to be a certain amount of, of coordination. But people will accept that. That's the structure of the organization. So they are in a position to, to bring some of these things to life. That is the way you set up group meetings, the way you set up furniture, uh, where, where, how you uh, delegate and allow play in the organization. The play of our ideas, um, whether you listen to people, how many people are at the table, and so on, and a whole set of strategies, numbers of which have been here, um, that 
that are available to us if we understand the importance of the relatedness that they are. So I, I'm not so pessimistic. But if you can do it in China, <laughs> so what shall we share back? Or how shall we share back? We have five minutes, right? To share back. Mm -hmm. Well, the dance has to be. Yeah. You have to have the dance. Can I just share as like a someone that experienced your sharing out? I just also just love each of the groups sharing out too. It's really powerful to, for me to hear the stories. Yeah, or maybe we just if we can really stick each to them. Yeah. 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 Ask for yes. a minute, yeah. then yeah. I think we can do it. Yeah. Ken, what phrase did you use that included the word vocabulary? Well, what it seems to me, the way I've looked at a lot of this, a lot of my notes, is a whole lot of good ideas that come out of this. I have a feeling rich by these stories. And I like vocabulary pieces. Some of them are large things, some of them are small. Some bring people into a room and have them sit and have a conversation. Others are just going to practice the words that you're going to conversation and so on. Others are bringing voices from outside the organization into the organization. And there are whole separate practices. So you've got a vocabulary. And like putting sentences together as a leader, or I would say as a leadership position, you draw from the vocabulary as best you can within the context. I guess what I'm wondering, if this is just a suggestion, and my feelings won't be hurt, you know, <laughs> is, like this idea of vocabulary pieces, mm -hmm. that we yeah. explored vocabulary pieces <coughs> that may belong here, and we have some vocabulary pieces that we'd like to share, and one of them could be the dance, and some of them could be phrases that have somehow reverberated with you, and whoever feels like they've got a vocabulary piece, whether it's a sentence mm. or... What if we were all on the stage, and somebody, we each had a piece of vocabulary? Yes. Okay. I just wonder about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would that be nice. Just, uh, would you, would you have to? Yes, yes, we have a drawing as well. We have a drawing about the relation between Would you have to at least structure it that way that you would have to position the four questions that we have been reflecting about? No. no, no not me. I'm not sure that we need to. Okay. It's, it's, it's a form of poetry. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so it's putting words together as well as movement and silence and as part of the, as, as a performance. All right. <laughs> and then if you feel like your vocabulary piece is to just be present with the group and choose not to say anything, I think that's beautiful. Or if you don't want to come up, that's beautiful. Is that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's yes. improv. Exactly. It's improv. Yeah. improv. Yeah. You can offer yes. a vocabulary piece that you would like. sure that we need to share that on process, just the idea that we'd like to share with you some of the vocabulary. Can we do that? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. 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 yes.
Can we, before you guys leave, could you get together as a group and say hello here and then take a picture that we could post? A line? Would that be okay? Like everyone right over there? And Just all crowd in? Yeah, I'll crowd in, say hi, and then I'll take a picture too that we can post online. <laughs> Hi, you too. Yeah. 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 No, it's okay. <laughs> okay, everybody say hi first and then I'll take a picture. Okay, and then I'll take a picture. Um, you guys down low can get up a little bit higher. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to have your head on it. <laughs> okay, let's see. I've got Chet and Ron are in the bed, so I've got that much. Okay, and let me turn on my flash, too. I swear I'm going to trip off some of doing very well. Now to getting the cords and the chairs. Okay, so I have Ron and Chet and Yvonne, so that's good. Lovely picture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice you work, Chad. Good job. No, no. Did you see Ron's post to you? Nice, nice picture. Looking good, Chet. Hey, guys. Oh, no, it's stopped.